Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Microsoft Flight Sim, where I'm going to try out a new freeware plane released to flightsim.to by Tango Golf. This is the Bristol Type 188 Flaming Pencil. I'm assuming Flaming Pencil wasn't an official title, uh, but it was a British high-speed research aircraft, and it was meant to uh, get to Mach 2. And well, it's interesting. It's got two big turbojets. It might remind you of the SR-71 with the jets mounted the way they are on the wings. And we're going to see how it goes. I, I don't think it actually got to Mach 2. Let me just take a look at what the specs are. It says on the on the page, the flightsim.to page, that it got to Mach 1.88. It's a little bit curious that that is the number because the Bristol is... Bristol Type 188. So I'm I'm curious whether that's the actual number or not, or whether it's anyway. It, it seems a little bit too convenient that uh, the Bristol Type 188 uh, reached the top speed of Mach 1.88. But anyway, we'll, we're going to try it out, and I'm going to try it out in the appropriate location for test flights like this. We're going to take off from Edwards, and we're going to fly over to Las Vegas and see how it goes. Alright, so here we are, and this is how the cockpit looks. It is not a lightweight plane. It is 3 gigabytes, a little bit more than 3 gigabytes actually. But it's a very legit cockpit here. Uh, certainly not your typical freeware. And I fully expect that this is actually how the cockpit looks. There is a surviving remnant of the Bristol Type 188 at the RAF Museum at Cosford. Cosford? Cosford. Uh, and the plane is stainless steel. And again, looks the part. It's a convincing model of uh, prototype from the 1960s. So it first flew in 1962. Look at those engines, though. That I don't expect. Why are they so long? That 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 is a surprise. And the shock cones are interesting. All right. Well, let's see how it goes. Spill valves. Okay. Okay. Well, we're off. While that's so it says spill valves, I think that's the upper light. The lower light is probably afterburner. But that is a crazy wing, too. Not only does it have these crazy nacelles. That you wouldn't expect, but that wing is is weird. Uh, the the sort of way it tries to blend into the nacelles is reminiscent of the SR seventy one. The SR seventy one just does that much more smoothly. Uh, the outer wing pieces are not entirely unlike the SR seventy one's outer wing pieces. I uh, also so it's sort of like. Suggesting SR 71 ish motifs, but I can't believe it gets much lift with this wing. <laughs> it's, um, and it doesn't. Uh, the approach speed is really high. Well, we're getting close to that 36,000 feet. I might as well go ahead with the afterburner. Passed Mach 1 really smoothly, much more smoothly than, than the F-104 by Sim Skunk Works, I'll tell you, having, I've been flying that one quite a bit recently. Um, I'm not, I, I, I tend to believe the way the F-104 does it, but it's, it's not entirely unreasonable for this to be the way it is too. Now the wiki article says that the longest subsonic flight lasted only 48 minutes as 70% of its fuel was needed to reach its operational al altitude. So, that is no trouble getting to Mach 1.7, I'll tell you that. The F-104 has much more apparent problem with that. But then again, that's usually when it's carrying the external tanks. This doesn't have any external tanks. I guess it's probably just a big fueled fuselage. We're over California, of course, but I went the wrong way. I haven't turned towards Las Vegas at all. 
But up front we get the sort of mock cone-ish silence and then we only hear the engines in the back. At these speeds it turns about as well as you'd expect. Yeah, I made it all the way to the coast here, real fast. Oh, uh, well it's reached Mach 1.88. It's nearing Mach 1.9. I wonder if I can get it there. But I get the feeling that they've sort of tacked it to that 1.88 thing. Next time if they wanted to make Mach 2, they should have called it a Type 204 or something. Uh, well, I just lost Afterburner. Oh, oh I, I've lost the engines completely, or not. Okay, no. I don't know, the Afterburners just quit on me for a bit, but now they're back. There's a red light here. On three, but that's the tank. Okay, so these are the tanks. Five tanks and then uh, red on three, yeah. So, okay. Once it gets to altitude, I'd say that it uh, probably has about an hour worth of fuel, actually. So, going at Mach 1.8, it could last for an hour. I don't know what caused the engines to quit briefly. We're back to Edwards now. There's Edwards. Well, it sure is an interesting plane. That, I mean, ev everything about it is interesting. That horizontal stabilizer at the top of the vertical stabilizer is like tiny, for instance. <laughs> I mean, it's just a very small one compared to the size of the vertical stabilizer. So many interesting choices were made here. And it's very stubbornly at Mach 1.88, I'll tell you. Or maybe 1.89, but somewhere in there. It's very, very definitely going at that speed. Okay, well, the flight to Las Vegas is not a long one, and we still have fuel in the outer tanks. It looks like the tanks 2 and 4 are the ones to drain last. And they're still full. But it is time to descend. And we've been going full speed basically so far, and we should see how it handles otherwise. It ends up having this little yaw wiggle sometimes like that that's not unreasonable I don't know if they added any sort of yaw stability thing I was thinking about the Hoover Dam but we, we just won't do that we'll just sort of go straight into Las Vegas and maybe fly around the strip a little bit before landing And we're below the speed of sound, clearly. Does it have air brakes? Yes, it does. Actually, I saw these in a photo of it from uh, from the museum. I think this version is the, the, the serial number for this one is the one in the museum. So uh, I saw the little air brakes from that image and Yet another interesting design choice. Just look at them. Got to retract them. Ooh, a little bit of lag here, but that's probably Las Vegas loading. And extend them. They're sort of like little grid fin kind of things. But that's that's those are really interesting air brakes. <laughs> uh, very interesting air brakes. So I'll have the link to this in the video description. And thanks to Tango Golf for making it. 
is obviously a very interesting addition to my selection of aircraft. But now, the interesting part, trying to land it. The trims are actually these flick switches, so that's the pitch trim right there. Hmm. Okay, landing gear down. Flaps down. All looks good out here. Just double checking. Much like the SR-71, it's got the bar right in the middle of the canopy. <laughs> Alright, about 150 on touchdown. A little bit better off than the F-104 there. Yeah, really interesting air brakes. So, we have arrived in Las Vegas. I didn't land at Nellis, but that gives us a nice view of the buildings here as we taxi in. And I'll try not to bump into any airliners. But with that, and with this Bristol Type 188, which I will definitely be keeping in my inventory of planes, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.